Hello friends, this is Dan Carlton, founder of Planner U and the Paragraph Project. Today I want to share with you a framework I call Six Strategies in Six Minutes. And the whole point of this framework is to help strategists come up with ideas pretty quickly when it comes to uh, positioning lines or creative brief lines. I think we've all been in a situation where we don't have a lot of time, we don't have weeks and we don't have months to, to figure out um, a strategy for a client. So this tool is a nice way to, to generate ideas quickly, um, something that can literally take six minutes so that you can have a conversation with your creative teams, you can put together a creative brief, you can present to your clients. You know, Within 24 hours, you'll have um, at least some directions to, to talk through and get people started to think about. Um, before we get into the framework itself, I just want to explain a little bit about the genesis and, and how we got to it. So. Um, if we think back to like the early 1940s and Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I'm sure you're all kind of rolling your eyes. You've heard about this a thousand times. So um, I do want to just spend a, a quick minute on it um, just to kind of discuss how we got to this model, this framework. So if you think about the hierarchy of needs, uh, when Maslow developed this, it was based on this theory that uh, people have kind of fundamental base kind of physical sort of needs that they have. Um, that once they meet those, they kind of go up the pyramid and they get to this point of self-actualization at the very top. So fast forward about 20 years later, there was a uh, psychologist named David McClelland from Harvard University, and he wanted to learn more about this top part of the pyramid, the self-actualization. And his whole theory was that if we're living in a modern society where a lot of these base needs are met, then a lot of the um, kind of motivations and triggers for how people behave kind of live up at this top part of the pyramid, which, which seems to make sense. So he did a lot of research and he realized that there's actually um, three different drivers um, that really uh, compel people to take action in their lives. Um, so the first is this idea of achievement. This is all about uh, accomplishment, about growth, expansion as a human being. The next idea is power. This is about having control or influence over your, yourself, your future, um, or, or others even. And then finally, this idea of affiliation. So affiliation is about having a sense of belonging, um, about creating an identity based on the people that you surround yourself with, or um, finding purpose in um, kind of rallying together around a cause um, or issue or um, some sort of identity bigger than yourself. So if you take these three different drivers as um, kind of the backbone of the framework, what we would do is we would kind of break this into like a three by three framework, or a three by three matrix, right? So we have the three drivers down the middle, um, and then on the left hand side, what we want to do is we want to understand kind of the extremes of each of these different drivers. So on the left hand side, we're going to be looking at move away motivation. So a lot of times people call these fears. And then on the right hand side, we want to talk about move toward motivations. So these might be goals or aspirations that people have. So the reason why we want to look at both is depending on the person and the situation, they might be more compelled to take action based on kind of moving away from a situation that they're not happy with or they may be more compelled to move toward something that they aspire to in the future. So thinking about these three, um, it's a very kind of simple way to think about, again, you have one, two, three, four, five, six different potential strategic directions that you can brainstorm based off of this, this framework. So to give you an example of how it might work, let's think about um, you know, maybe we're working for a manufacturer of high-end hiking equipment. And we want to figure out, you know, what are some of the strategic directions that they, they could take. Again, we want to do this quickly, not obsess too much about the language, but just try to map out some territories that are all based in some sort of human truth um, that are kind of born out of these three different drivers. So first off, let's talk about achievement. So achievement, like we said, is about kind of growth and accomplishment. And we'll focus on the move away first. So if you think about people when it relates to hiking equipment, um, and hiking in general, they might have um, this worry that they can't necessarily do it, that they, they don't trust their own abilities, they don't have the confidence um, to really kind of get to the goal that they have in mind. So you might decide that the brand has this big opportunity to represent um, this 
point of encouragement and to remind people to um, never give up or never quit on yourself, something like that. Don't, too, don't worry too much about the words. I think um, kind of wordsmithing these and getting them a little bit tighter and a little bit more on brand and a little bit more distinct is something that you could kind of do as a separate exercise. This is more just kind of mapping out different territories where you could play. Now moving on to the toward side. So if you're thinking about, again, achievement when it comes to you know, hiking and, and hiking apparel, um, a lot of people look at this activity as a way to um, you know, really challenge themselves and to, to push their boundaries. So maybe there's a strategy around that. So right there, really quickly, we have kind of two different strategies to think about. We can move on down to power. Um, again, power is all about uh, control and influence. On the negative side, the, the move away. Perhaps people, when they think about this category, it seems very um, technical. They don't understand all the jargon and understanding like how to pick one piece of gear over another or exactly how to you know, make the trek that, they're, that they, wanna, they wanna make. So maybe this brand can play this role of helping people uh, maybe simplify the ascent. So that's one potential kind of strategy direction you can think about. On the flip side, you know, again, um, a lot of times that people are that are outdoor enthusiasts and, and really engaged outdoors, um, there is a bit of a competitive kind of spirit to them and, and what they want to accomplish. And they want to one-up their buddies a little bit and make sure that they kind of have a leg up on them. So perhaps there's a strategy that's really built around that idea of wanting to um, outperform the competition, so to speak. So maybe this is about, you know, buy our equipment and you will get an unfair advantage. So just kind of playing to the ego a little bit that, you know, we're the brand that kind of gives you the leg up. Um, we'll, we'll make you better, to the, better than the buddy that's kind of climbing and hiking next to you. And then the final driver here, affiliation. Um, Again, thinking about some of the fears that people might be wanting to move away from when it comes to affiliation in, in the world of, of hiking. Um, there's probably this sense for a lot of people that they feel like they can't necessarily keep up with, with the rest of them, you know? So if you're thinking about that move away and a strategy line that can really kind of attack that head on, maybe there's this idea that our brand will make sure that you don't get left behind. And then on the flip side, again, looking kind of more positively towards the goals and, and kind of an aspiration from an affiliation standpoint, you know, maybe there's a story with this brand that, you know, it's a brand that, uh, you know, it's professional grade, more of the experts use it and that sort of thing. So this is a very kind of simple, straightforward strategy here, but this might be something along, along the lines of, you know, Learn from the best. So this idea that this brand, our client's brand, is just this community of pros and experts, and if you buy into our brand, you're kind of tapping into this wealth of knowledge that can help you become a better um, hiker. So I'm just going to try to zoom out a little bit just so you kind of get the full picture of how this all works. So you can see relatively quickly, we were able to map out kind of six different directions. Like I said, don't get too worried about the actual language in here. This is really just a kind of point you in a couple different directions and then you can kind of build on this and just massage the language and get it a little bit sharper. Um, but this is a great tool just for kind of figuring out different paths. Um, and there's a lot of different applications for this. Like you can go through this exercise and it will give you some good fodder for a conversation with the creative team. And you can just say, hey, here's some of the things I've been thinking about. What are your reactions? Um, where do you think the most potential is? You could take these lines and you could um, put them into focus groups or an online survey and get consumer reaction to them just to see where, where the heat is, so to speak. Um, and then I think it also works from kind of a high level, kind of brand positioning territory sort of place or like a more tactical level. You know, if you are um, doing an email campaign, this could lead you to six different 
subject lines in your emails, right? Or it can be different, six different headlines for six different landing pages, and you can kind of go through and test and optimize and, and that sort of stuff. So we really love this tool. It's just a great way to get um, a lot of ideas quickly from a strategy standpoint. And then the fun part really starts when you get to share it and you get feedback from both um, your teams and your consumers. Um, so that's what I have for you today. Again, this is framework. Um, this framework is called Six Strategies in Six Minutes. Um, appreciate you tuning in, and I'll have more to come for you soon. Thank you.